Hi guys, welcome to IELTS Ninja. In this video, I'm going to be evaluating a student essay right in front of you. But before we go into that, do subscribe to our channel. Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to be evaluating a student essay for the topic the shortage of housing in big cities has severe consequences to people. What are the factors influencing this issue and how can it be countered? Okay, so when I'm evaluating the essay, what do I expect the student to have written? First, the topic is shortage of housing. Next, he needs to talk about the factors and finally, a solution. Okay. Now, when we are evaluating an essay, please remember we are going to be evaluating it on four parameters. The first one is task completion, then coherence and cohesion, grammatical range and accuracy and finally lexical resources okay please refer back to some of our previous videos to understand what these brand parameters are and how they impact your overall writing task band now i'm going to start reading the passage and see whether the first parameter that is task completion has been uh, met by the student now, in order to meet the task completion criteria, the student should have answered this particular question completely. Okay. So, unless and until he has answered, he has not answered all the parts of the question, we cannot give him a good band as far as task completion is concerned. Let me start reading. Housing in cities is pretty much a common problem that grapples most employed professionals who move to some other cities in prospect of better lives. Okay. Uh, most of these individuals fall within the age bracket of 22 to 30. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to mark certain grammatical errors as I read because uh, so that you understand the flow of the statement. 22 to 30, this here he should have written years. So, incomplete sentence and have just begun their careers. It is unreasonable to expect them to shell out a considerable chunk of money every month just in order to sustain themselves. Most cosmopolitan cities these days have houses that charge an enormous rent and this affects the budget. Budgets that people chalk out for their entire year. As per a recent survey, over 90% of houses globally are considered unaffordable. Housing unaffordable. Okay. Uh, over 90% of houses globally are considered unaffordable. Housing is one of the most rudimentary requirements for thriving and it's unaffordability seems just plain ridiculous few houses that fall within the budget are either too far away from the place of work or have infrastructure related issues that need to be taken care of although having a roof over one's head is deemed a primal need uh, it is it is a privilege that few enjoy. Isn't that ironic? Countries such as Japan, Thailand and Finland have been able to solve housing problems for their residents by strategically working out solutions. Maybe it's time for our country to follow suit and work out solutions for its own citizens. Rent and home prices have escalated more than an average work workers income over the years and this gap needs to be bridged as soon as possible okay now the first thing i see here is okay the passage is talking about shortage of housing 
but is it talking about the factors like what is the main reason for shortage of housing no is it giving any solution to the problem no so if you notice the student has simply written in a very general way about housing without answering the question that has been asked okay so for such essays no matter how well written it is uh, i still haven't counted how many words are there but even if it falls under the word limit just because the student hasn't answered the question we cannot give them full marks on or a nine band on task completion maximum how much can this student be awarded the student will probably be awarded around a band 3 or a band 3.5 uh depending on the amount of information that he has given so let us look at the band descriptor for uh band 4 response to the task only in a minimal way or the answer is tangential that is he has taken only one part of the question and answered that the format may be inappropriate presence of position but this is unclear presence some main ideas but these are difficult to identify and may be repetitive okay now let us look at band 3 does not adequately answer any part of the task now this is a more apt description of how this person has answered they haven't actually answered the question at all they haven't gone in detail about either the factors causing a shortage of housing or the solution for this problem so i cannot grant this person more than band 3 in task completion why because this person hasn't adequately answered any part of the question they have just given a overall essay about housing which has got nothing to do with the question asked next let us come to coherence and cohesion in this we are going to focus on how the essay is organized now what is the various parts of an essay every essay has an introduction body and a conclusion right and your thoughts are basically arranged in a sequential format now if i were to read this passage again are you able to clearly distinguish between the paragraphs or see any amount of organization here you will notice that this entire chunk here is put as one para and the next part of it forms another para okay can you distinguish between a clear introduction a body paragraph 1 2 or 3 or a conclusion here no uh this last part seems like a conclusion this part of it seems like an introduction but there is no clear cut differentiation within the passage as to how the student has organized their thoughts now let us look at the ideas themselves when you read the introduction of this passage did you get any idea as to what the student is going to tell in his essay like what are the factors according to them that uh, is influencing this uh, housing issue or are they going to be giving solutions in this passage or what exactly are they planning on doing in this essay you have no idea right and even when you read the uh, essay you are constantly looking out for points you are not able to identify when one a uh, thought process ends and when the other starts so if we look at the band descriptors here a band four says presents information or ideas but they are not arranged coherently and there is no clear progression in re response okay a uh, band three says does not organize ideas logically may use very limited range of cohesive devices and those used may not indicate a logical relationship between ideas okay now you will notice here this is more of a structuring issue so at maximum we can give this candidate a band 3 or 3.5 not more than that largely because they haven't even put their ideas into proper paragraphs now let us look come to the third factor which is grammatical range and accuracy uh in grammatical range we try to see how comfortable is the uh, student in forming sentences and following the various rules of grammar okay so i'm going to be reading through the passage and while i'm reading through i want to point out uh, issues with sentence structuring 
punctuation or any other grammatical issue that is hindering the understanding of the passage. Now, the focus here is on readability. It is not just grammar. So, there is a difference. Sometimes people make grammatical mistakes, but as a reader, I can still understand what this person is trying to say. But there are other situations where the grammatical mistakes are so severe that I'm not able to understand what the writer is trying to say. So, the focus here is on readability and not just on following of grammatical rules. So, let us read the passage again and see how far are we able to understand the candidate's approach to the question. Housing in cities is pretty much a common problem that, gra uh, that grapples most employed professionals. Okay. Now, uh, in this part, this sentence has been made unnecessarily complex and it is also difficult to understand. Why? Because instead of writing, uh, most employed professionals grapple with issues with uh, gra grapple with housing problems in cities, which would have been an active voice. This person has chosen to write in a passive voice right at the beginning of their essay. Now, what is the problem with it? This hinders understanding of the passage or readability of the passage. Okay. Most of these individuals fall within the age bracket of 22 to 30. Now here, as I mentioned here earlier, they haven't mentioned years, which is very important to understand what 22 and 30 stand for and have just begun their careers. Okay. It is unreasonable to expect them to shell out a considerable chunk of money every month just in order to sustain themselves. Okay. Most cosmopolitan cities these days have houses that charge an enormous rent and this affects the budgets. Budget is a, a word like the plural of budget is also budget. There is no such thing as budgets. So it is budget. This is the budget that people chalk out for their entire year. It should be for an entire year. As per a recent survey, over 90%. Now, the reason I marked this as wrong is when you're giving, a, when you're writing an essay in IELTS, please do not refer back to an article because this is an essay that you're writing on the spot. It is going to be difficult for you to remember or recall exact data that came in a certain article or magazine. This happens when you're writing a research article. However, if you're writing spontaneously on the spot, you will be at the max be able to give generalized examples, but not specific examples, which is why the chances of this student scoring higher is further reduced. Housing is one of the most rudimentary requirements for thriving and its unaffordability seems just plain ridiculous. Okay. Few houses that fall within the budget are either too far away from the place of work or have infrastructure related issues that need to be taken care of. Okay. Although, no comma here, having a roof over one's head is deemed a primal need. It is a privilege. No capitalization. There's a full stop here, but there's no capitalization. Uh, it is a privilege that few enjoy. In this case, it should have been a comma here. Isn't that ironic? Okay. Countries such as Japan, Thailand and Finland have been able to solve housing problems for their residents. Okay. Again, Finland should have been a capital F. It's small for the residents by strategically working out solutions. Maybe it's time for our country to follow suit and work out solutions for its own citizens. Okay. Rent and home, rents and home prices have escalated more than an average worker's spelling mistake income over the years and this gap needs to be bridged as soon as possible. Again, full stop was missing. Now, Though there were quite a few grammatical errors, 
I did not have a problem in understanding what the student has written. It was to a large extent uh, quite clear what the student is trying to say here. And we also noticed that the student is largely focused on, on the problem itself and not about what is causing this problem or the solution to this problem. Correct? So now let us look at the band descriptors to understand what score can we possibly give the student under grammatical range and accuracy. Now, if we look at the band descriptors here, if you see band six, band six describes uh, grammatical range and accuracy as a use of, mi of a mix of simple and complex sentence forms, makes some errors in grammar and punctuation, but they rarely reduce communication. Okay, let's also look at band five, which says uses only a limited range of structures. Okay, which is not true. This person has actually used a lot of uh, grammatical structures. Uh, let us also look at band seven. Uses a variety of complex structures, produces frequent error-free sentences. No, this is not the case. There are quite a few errors in this passage. So, I think we can give this person a band six for grammatical range and accuracy. Now, we have come to the fourth parameter, which is lexical range. Now, uh, when we are judging a student's ability to use vocabulary, we are not just looking at his ability to use advanced or bombastic vocabulary. We are trying to see if these words fit into the passage. Do they make sense to me as a reader? And is it taking or bringing across what the writer wants to communicate? Now, if you look at some of the keywords that this person has used here, uh, you will notice that their way of writing, like uh, pretty much a common problem that grapples most employed professionals. Okay, so grapples employed professionals, this is using of advanced vocab, but when they write is pretty much a common problem. It sounds very casual, very informal, which is not the tone of the passage. Next, uh, who moved to uh, some other cities in prospect of better life, wrong usage in a sentence. Most of these individuals fall within the age bracket of 20 to 30 and have just begun their careers. It is unreasonable to expect them to shell out a considerable chunk of money every month just in order to sustain themselves. Most cosmopolitan cities these days have houses that charge an enormous rent and this affects the budgets that people chalk out for their entire year. As per a recent survey, uh, over 90% of houses globally are considered unaffordable. Housing is one of the most rudimentary requirements uh, and its unaffordability seems just plain ridiculous. Again, here just plain ridiculous is informal, which is breaking the pattern of the essay. Few houses that fall within the budget are either too far away from the place of work or have infrastructure related issues that need to be taken care of. Although having a roof over one's head is deemed a primal need. Uh, okay. Here, primal means basic or uh, the most basic need. The use of primal in the sentence is not correct. Uh, primal talks about instincts. It is not just uh, or the most raw instincts of a person. Like for example, a primal need is something that is related to a bodily function. Uh, it is a privilege that few enjoy. Isn't that ironic? Countries such as Japan, Thailand and Finland have been able to solve housing problems for the residents by strategically working on out solution. Maybe it's time for our country to follow suit and work out solutions for its own citizens. Okay. Um, by and large, you can see that this person has tried to use a lot of advanced vocabulary, but has not been very successful in communication, largely because of the misuse of certain words. But overall, we are able to understand what this person is saying. Now, let us look at the band descriptors to understand what band we could possibly assign this person. So if, under lexical resources, when we look at the band descriptor, look at band six. 
It says uses an adequate range of vocabulary for the task, attempts to use less common vocabulary but with some inaccuracy, makes some errors in spelling and or, or word formation but they do not impede communication. Okay. Let's also look at band 5 which says uses a limited range of vocabulary but this is minimally adequate for the task, may make noticeable errors in spelling and or, or word formation. This may cause some difficulty for the reader. Okay. Um, no, I we did not have any difficulty in reading. So let us go towards 6 or higher. Now let us look at band 7. It says it uses a sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision. No, there was no precision in the way this person wrote. It was a loose use of words. So I think the more appropriate band to assign the student is a band 6. So now this person has got a 3 in task completion, 3.5 in coherence and cohesion and 6 in grammatical range and accuracy and lexical resources. So overall, what we have, we are going to calculate this person's band is 12 plus 6, 18, 18.5 divided by 4, which is approximately equal to 4.6 or 7. That can be rounded off to a band 5. Now, what were the primary mistakes this candidate did? This candidate could have easily scored higher had they simply concentrated on the task completion aspect of their essay. Had they answered the question that was asked, which was identify the cause or the factors that lead to shortage of housing and what are the solutions. Had they written even one or two points for this, they would have definitely scored higher on task completion. The second mistake that this person has done is paragraphing. Instead of splitting their thoughts and putting that in smaller paragraphs, they've just written a completely long essay with no breaks at all. This could have easily be redeemed and this person's overall band would have definitely been more than 6 or 6.5 with these two minor corrections. Well guys, I hope you agree with my evaluation of this essay. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be updated with our latest notifications.